Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is Introduction to SAS Statistics. And in today's lesson, we'll be covering logistic regression. If you haven't seen the previous three lessons, I recommend that you check them out and as well check out my Introduction to SAS lessons as well, just so we make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, logistic regression is a very popular and common topic in statistics. It's also known as classification and it differentiates from linear regression because instead of having your response variable be a continuous variable such as monetary amount or uh, SAT scores or a number of other continuous variables, it's actually your response variable is usually in this case a classification, uh, which is could be a yes or no, could be an ordinant or or nominal set of variables. So for example, red, green, or blue, or it could be small, medium, or large. In today's lesson, we'll be covering when they are binary, so in this case, yes or no, and the data set that we are working with. And the data set we're working with is this banking mar marketing data set, I think from some po Polish, oh no, not Polish, Portuguese uh, banking institution. And really what they want to classify the goal is to predict who is going to subscribe to a term deposit so you'll see the number of data sets and and the number of hits and whatnot and here's the data dictionary and it's binary yes or no the types of data so that's all good very helpful um, so let's go ahead and get started okay so this file is tab delimited so I'm gonna be using my handy dandy import script that I have. So here I have proc import, and we're gonna name this, we're just gonna save this to the work data, uh, work library. And it's gonna ask us for the data file path. So I'm just gonna go and find the data path file and really depends on where you save the file, but in my case, I've saved it. Here. Okay, perfect, and that's all you need to do. So let's go ahead and run that. And we're gonna check the log. It looks like it ran successfully for 45,211 observations, 17 variables. So quite a rich data set. And we go ahead and take a look at it. And you'll see all these different characteristics, the yes or no, the previous day, the campaign, all these different components. Uh, but what I'm most interested in is how do I is there a model I can build that will help me better predict whether or not someone's going to subscribe to a term loan so I can better focus my marketing, have my people call those individuals as opposed to just randomly selecting some individuals, build out some science related to this. Okay, so that's good. So keeping that in mind, let's go ahead and do some proc logistic. So we're going to hear the data set or the proc step is proc logistic and we need to define the data set that we're using. So in this case, bank. I also want to include some plots. In this case, I'm going to get lazy and just put plots all. So it's going to include all the plots. Uh, by default, sometimes people just do effects or just odd ratios, but we'll just leave it like that. And what, what we need to do is for our non-continuous variables, we have to define that as, as class, just like we have to do in, in other models and other procedure steps as well. In this case, I want to use marital. And then here I'm going to use parm ref. And then I'm going to say my reference, which is going to be my baseline, is going to be single. Put that in quotation. Close off with a semicolon. And then as well, I'm going to be using units and and uh, now I'm going to be using balance and age in my model as well. Feel free to use different components as well. But whenever you use uh, continuous variables in your logistic regression, it's oftentimes good to put an increment. That way you can actually measure and assess it and you'll be able to see what the actual impact is. So here I'm going to go balance. Otherwise it would analyze the model at $1, which is fine as well, but it's just a little bit harder to see on the graphs and appreciate what the actual differences are. And then here, now we develop our model. In this case, the response variable is demand. And then here, I have to define what the what I'm modeling against. In this case, I want to look for 
model for yes, where there is a demand loan. And here I'm gonna do my various variables, balance, age, and then um, I wanted to, to also produce uh, the odds, uh, which we'll look at coordinate and discoordinate odds ratio, which is a very powerful way to assess it. So, okay, that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this portion. Okay. Um, okay, sorry, it's not called demand, it's actually called Y. It's related to demand loans, that's why I got confused. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna walk through this output. Uh, we're gonna go to the very top. Obviously, I should have put a title, but that's fine. Here it says your data set, what your response variable is, the number of response levels. In this case, it's a binary logit. Uh, is the model type because there's only two response variables, yes or no. And it's gonna use the Fisher scoring. The number of observations read, the number of observations used, so it doesn't look like it dropped any of the responses, which is good. Um, even if it did, it would still work out fine, but you should understand why that's occurring. And then here, it says the ordered values one to the responses and the, the frequency count, so you can get an idea of how common term loads are. And then here it's gonna model for y is equal to yes. And then here are the classification levels for marital status. So divorced, married, single, and you'll see the different design variables. So in this case, because there's three, that you have to have two design variables. Because one, this is the baseline, this is divorced, and this is married. So just to give you an idea. And then it looked like it did converge um, and actually create the model, which is good. Uh, expected and then here is just model statistics to tell you whether or not the intercept only model is better or worse than than the intercept and covariates and in this case uh, we're, we're mostly going to be focusing on AIC and, and SC and what basically the premise is that a a AIC uh, will punish for more will punish if there are more uh, independent variables used in your model. So it actually prefers a simpler model over a more complicated model. While SC not only punishes or observes for the number of variables that you have in your model, but also the number of observations. And typically it punishes more than, than AIC. So you usually see that SC has a higher score than, than AIC. So both those models, the lower the score, the better. So you'll see, based off the intercept only, compared to uh, with with the covariates, you'll see that it actually improves the model. So that's good. Uh, and then you'll see here some likelihood ratios, and you'll see here that if your alpha is 0 0.05, which is a common measure, you'll see that your model looks like you can. This in this case, it, what it's looking for is whether or not all the 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 components of the models are zero. So effectively saying that the intercept only is, is better. Uh, and if we continue on, you'll see here, uh, again, looking at each of the different explanatory variables and whether or not they are statistically significant. And you'll see based off this that they are, you'll see the number of degrees of freedom, uh, their chi-score as well. And if you go down here, you'll see as well the analysis of maximum likelihood estimates and you'll see across across the board uh, that it is all statistically significant which is good and then as well you'll see here the the c score basically tells you uh, when it ran the odds ratio analysis how many times was it actually correct versus not correct in this case 59 percent which isn't the greatest but considering the likelihood of the number of demand loans was about one ninth of the population, eleven percent. This is not not too bad, and you'll see here the percent that were coordinated versus discoordinated, number of pairs that were formed, and as well these other measures to help you better assess your model. And if you go down here, you'll see the units, which is just for classifications. Could be one for balance in age because we included units there. It had one thousand and five as the as increments. And you'll see here that within the 95 confidence interval, as long as it doesn't cross one, in this case it's either above one or, or below one, uh, that means it's statistically significant, which is 
which is good. And it's uh, the confidence interval doesn't cross this this one boundary, which is the the odds ratio. Uh, so you'll see here that the this is the odds ratio with 95% likelihood. You'll see the the mean and as well the range of the confidence limits. So you'll see here, which is good, which tells us that these are significantly significant and tells us uh, what the actual impact is. So that's good. That's that's interesting. And uh, we'll cover the ROC curve in uh, in the next couple lessons. And you'll as well you'll be able to see here what the impact on the balance is on these different marital statuses. So you'll see able to see single, which is this middle line. You'll see the impact of divorce, and as well you'll see the impact. Uh, or sorry, uh, uh, sorry, I read that wrong. Uh, marital. This is kind of hard to see with the these uh, different different colors, uh, and then as well you'll see uh, married at the very bottom, and the probability that they'll actually the pr predicted probability that they'll be yes. So perfect, and this is at at a given age of 40.94, so controlling for for the age variable in these components. So that's good, that's interesting. And we're gonna go back, and what you can also do is assess for interactions. So if you wanna assess for interactions, you'll just need to put this vertical bar in between them. You can limit the number of interactions, but we don't have that, that many variables here or that many degrees of freedom within any, any variable, so I'm not too concerned there. So if we go up, and you'll see a lot of this is very similar, but when you get down to here, it'll do these joint tests and you can see whether or not it has, is actually statistically significant. So you'll see the impact of balance on marital status, which doesn't look statistically significant. Um, the only interaction that does look like it is age on marital, which kind of makes sense. Balance on age, no, and then balance age and marital status. So that's good. Uh, if we were actually doing uh, a step stepwise model selection, which we'll be covering in the next lesson, you'll see that it would actually, would actually when we run through it, uh, I would actually probably drop these variables, depending on what, what kind of model that you, you were starting with. But either drop or uh, it probably it'd likely drop these models or not add them to the model. Okay, good. And you'll see here, this is just based off the, the different uh, components. You'll see here, balance and marital status for divorced people, and balance and marital status for married. But you'll see here, all of them are not statistically significant. And as well, you'll see here, compared to the previous model, if you looked here, is 50, 0.589. Now it's 0 0.605. So it's actually improved the model but as well you can take a look at the AIC and SC which I believe are, are lower as well um, that it did actually in fact improve the model and you'll see here the now the charts have updated and taken consideration I believe they've moved actually a little bit higher uh, since it has improved the model uh, that's probably expected uh, so that's that's it for proc logistics and logistic regression obviously you can make it more complicated you could just use one uh, explanatory variable as opposed to the multiple but if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave it in the comment section below don't forget to subscribe and i look forward to speaking to you next time thank you